The topic of today's video is symmetry in the molecule of ethane staggered form. So, as you can see here on the screen that this is a molecule of ethane and it is in a staggered form because as you can see these gray atoms, the dark gray atom represent carbon and these white atoms represent hydrogens and as you can see here that the hydrogens are not eclipsing that means that this hydrogen is present between the back two hydrogens so i can say that this is the staggered form of ethane in which the hydrogens are not eclipsing okay so what type of rotations are present in ethane staggered form so moving on first of all towards the principal axis of rotation and that is the c3 axis and as you can see here that if i give this molecule a c3 rotation this hydrogen will go here this hydrogen will go here and this hydrogen will go here and similarly these hydrogen will replace each other this will go here this will go here and this hydrogen will go here okay so that is the c3 rotation and i can play it as you can see here that I have just played the C3 rotation and this is the main, this is the principal axis of rotation present in the molecule of ethane staggered form. So moving on towards another axis of rotation, as we can see here that there is also a C2 axis of rotation. So how does the C2 axis of rotation exist in molecule of ethane? Okay, so this through this plane, okay, the C2 axis of rotation exists through this plane. Okay, let me just explain it by the help of motion. So, it's just like this. Okay, let me just repeat it in a slow manner. Okay, first of all, consider this ethane. Consider this hydrogen here. This hydrogen will go all the way and will replace this hydrogen. Okay, so now, as you can see, follow. you just have to follow the path of this hydrogen. Okay, so... As I play it slowly as you can see that the hydrogen is moving that this hydrogen is moving and going all the way through to replace the other hydrogen and similarly this hydrogen has replaced this hydrogen and this hydrogen has replaced this hydrogen so this is how the C2 axis of rotation exists so this is one C2 axis and you know the rule that if there is a uh, c2 axis perpendicular to a uh, principal axis of rotation then there are n number of c2 axis okay because uh, you know this rule that i have a c3 rotation and there is one c2 axis perpendicular to this c3 rotation okay the c3 axis was just like this okay so this was the c3 axis and perpendicular to this c3 axis what i have found is the c2 axis okay I have just found a C2 axis perpendicular to C3 axis and there is a rule that says that if there is one C2 axis perpendicular to Cn axis to principal axis then there should be n C2 axis means if there is a C3 and I have found one C2 then there should be three C2 axis. Okay, I have just found one C2. Let me just show you the other C2. So, this is the other C2 and again this is the other C2. So these are three C2 axes that are per present perpendicular to the C3 axis. Okay. So these three C2 axes are per present perpendicular to the C3 axis. Okay. So now, as you can see here, that in this molecule of ethane, the inversion is also present. And how is inversion present? Okay. As you can see here, inversion means that I have to pass this atom through the center towards the next one and when i do this every atom will find another atom to replace okay this atom will go all the way to replace this atom this atom will go all the way to replace this atom and this atom will go all the way to replace this atom okay so inversion center is present and i can show it with the help of this motion okay uh, you can just um, consider this atom it will go all the way through the center to this atom okay so as you can see here that all of these atoms are passing through the center and reaching their opposite ends so this is the inversion center present in the molecule of ethane and 
Another thing is I do have a S6 axis of rotation and that is the improper axis of rotation. Okay, and how does improper axis of rotation exist? Okay, now consider this here. If I give this molecule a C6 rotation, C6 means 60 degree and 60 degree means that this hydrogen will go all the way towards here. Okay, and when I pass the perpendicular plane, I will get a reflection down there. Okay, consider this hydrogen again. Okay, so this here is a C6 axis of rotation. Okay, so this is the C6 axis of rotation. The atom has turned by 60 degree rotation. This atom has turned by 60 degree rotation. This atom has turned by 60 degree rotation. And then after passing the plane, I will get a reflection here. And similarly, these atoms have also moved and moved and their reflection will be shown upward. Okay, so this reflection will go all the way down and what I get is just the same initial molecule. So, S6 improper axis of rotation is also present. So, moving on towards the sigma planes. Okay, so this here is a sigma plane that is present parallel to the principal axis of rotation. You know the C3 was the principal axis of rotation. Okay, and this one is present parallel to the principal axis of rotation. So, I can say that this here is the sigma d. Okay. And why it is a sigma d? Because it is cutting the two C2 axis. Okay. And again, I have an other C2. Uh, I have an other sigma plane. I have an other sigma plane. So, there are total three sigma d's present in this molecule of ethane. Okay, so what will be the point group? As you know, first of all, what you have to consider is the principal axis of rotation. We have a three C three principle of uh, principal axis of rotation, and then if there are perpendicular C two axes, then we call the point group to be D. So the point group is D again, and what we have written here is three. Three means that the C three is the principal axis of rotation, and D means that there are three C twos present perpendicular to the principal axis of rotation. Okay, so the next thing that you have to look at is the sigma H. Since there is no sigma H present in this molecule, so we have to now look forward towards the sigma V or sigma D. And we know that there are three sigma Ds, so the point group becomes equal to D3D. Okay, so that was all for today's video. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comments. Thank